Gary John Bishop, what's going on, brother? Uh, lots and lots and lots. It's a never-ending stream of getting my message out there. So lots of stuff going on. But thanks for having me. Well, this, I mean, we might as well make it a regular deal now because this, yeah. this is your fourth time on. So yeah, it's yeah, good this stuff. Should, this should be called a Dad's Edge Alliance featuring Gary John Bishop <laughs> <laughs> every week. I know, right? Might as well make you a co-host at this point. Right. So. The Larry and Gary show or something. Scary. <laughs> the so scary we, Gary and Larry show. That's right. Oh, yeah. The scary Larry and Gary show. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, so, I got this in the mail. All right, good. I'm glad you got a copy. That's nice. A little disappointed. It wasn't signed in blood like you promised. Right. So. I usually like to sign them in some body fluids, you know, <laughs> blood being the most obvious. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm glad it wasn't the other. So Yeah, yeah, we know. It's, it's, let's quickly moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I think it, it might, it either would increase the value or, or drastically I'm, devalue. I'm saying so. devalue significantly. <laughs> I'm saying it takes it into the realms of toilet paper. Right. Pretty quickly. That's why all the pages are stuck together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. All right, let's let's rock and roll. So, uh, you know, your show remains the two shows you've been on have, have remained in the uh, the top ten now for quite some time. The guys love yeah. your message. I love your message. You were one of the speakers of the Dad Edge Summit back in 2018. Uh, obviously, unfuck yourself was amazing. I recommend stop doing that shit. That literally every guy in our community because I was just talking to one of our guys about it this morning. And I always tell him, I was like, man, the whole book is amazing. I was like, and the last chapter will blow your mind. Yeah. So we, were, we were talking about that, but I want to give guys just some context. You know, if by chance there's somebody who's listening that doesn't know who you are, uh, right. I would I would love for you to share how you sort of kind of accidentally fell into this and then it yeah. became like everything. Right. Um, I was, at, I, I was thinking about this, like, I mean, I lived like 40 years of my life pretty much not giving a fuck for anybody but how I'm doing, right? And um, and which is how most uh, most of us are, by the way, if you're just honest about it, you're like, I'm mostly interested in how I'm doing, you know? And um, in, my late four, in my late 30s, um, someone suggested to me that I should get into this personal development thing for myself to do workshops and other shit that I had zero interest in dealing with, right? The whole thing just seemed like stupid, you know? Um, I don't want to find out about my chakra. I'm, you know, who cares, right? Um, but anyway, I did some of that work and I, uh, it was very, very surprising and it continues to surprise me the degrees to, to which you can get freer and freer and freer. And to me, ultimately, that's all it's all about. It's, it's, there's no destination. But that was in my, I, just as I turned 40, I got into that. But very quickly, I realized I love this stuff. This is awesome. And I loved the subject matter, which was all ontology uh, based at the time. And uh, so that really got my, myself, I kind of got into philosophy. And, and then I was trained to become a senior program director for this big personal development company, which was the most challenging time of my entire life because the training was just like, it was like a five year fucking brain scrape, right? I mean, it was just unbelievable, right? I mean, I even look back and I'm like, how did you manage to get through that? I mean, it's so intense, you know? But, uh, but I, I became a senior program director at a big company. I coached lots and lots of people. Um, I left that company to go and just go be with my family. I'd really had enough for the travel and all the, all the stuff that goes with it. Um, no drama, just had enough. And um, I, I had a small coaching business. I was coaching people and, you know, it was great. It was very healthy. I made a great living at it. I had a marketing person who said to me, you know, you should write a book. Which is yet another one of those things I just thought was bullshit, you know. Um, I think I'm just cynically Scottish or something. But anyway, I, uh, I wrote the book and I self-published the book. 
and we it rapidly went from like nothing to 30,000 copies in like five months. Um, and it's now sold about 1.7 million copies. Right? That so it? that's Man. that's in the US alone, by the way. That's not even in other countries. It's even, yeah. I went to Poland about a month ago, and it, there, I mean, it, there was like fucking billboards there with my books on them. <laughs> it was absurd. But, uh, but anyway, I uh, I then, you know, the book kind of spiraled off in its own thing. And, and then I just stepped into it. You know, it was really like, well, there's the space. So it's got to step in. I had no real intention of becoming, you know, like, I, you know, like some people are like intent on becoming a guy, right? Like or a woman or whatever. You know, I want to stand up in the stage. And I'd done that in workshops. It wasn't, I didn't see myself you know, becoming this influencer or something, you know. Um, I just was really looking to contribute, to make a difference, and and magically combine that in a way that I could do it full time, you know. Um, and then so since then, you know, I'm this I'm this international best selling author and I do I talk to like ten thousand people at a time. I I you know, um, doing all kinds of stuff that I can't quite say yet, but it's amazing. There's lots of great things that are happening. It's shocking and enlivening, but it's all grounded in this big commitment of mine just to make a difference for people. You know, like where are you at and what can I give you that might loosen something for you and allow you to spring into the next thing in your life? Was that enough? Was that the whole Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah, the whole thing, <clears throat> retail. What's been the most pleasantly surprising aspect about what you're doing? Oh, good. Good question. Um, no, it's a good question because nobody's ever fucking asked me it before. So I'll, I'll, let's just go with that. Um, the pleasantly surprising thing is I, I think it's drawn me closer to my family. So I got closer with my kids and closer to my wife. Um, there's nothing quite like your public persona to keep your private persona in check. <laughs> right. Like you have to walk the fucking walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Yeah. I tell everybody they forgive and I want it. Fuck it. That's my shit. I should just forgive instead. Um, so that's been it's that's been pleasantly surprising, I guess, in a lot of ways, yeah. What about the the thing that has surprised you maybe the most unpleasantly about it? Just the demand. Yeah. You know, the most challenging thing, like I get, to, I get emails from people. I get direct messages from people who are in a fucking desperate way, you know, like they're just in a desperate way and there's nothing I can do. Like I can't give you anything in the space of a paragraph or 20 that's going to spring you out of that shit. Right, there's just not right. And everybody wants just a word of wisdom and let you know you're going to be okay. And so, you know, like I want to, I want to make a difference with those guys, but I realize like there's there's only so much I can do. I can only, you know, I can extend myself. So, I have the team sometimes reach out to people and put resources their way. Not even just stuff about me, but whatever they're dealing with, you know. Um, but it's but it's definitely challenging, you know, the demand. Um, but, but, you know, at the same time, I'm, I'm fucking up for it. You know, I'm like, bring it. You know, I want this demand. I want this in my life. I want to be this guy. I want to be someone who other people can turn to and say, hey, what about la, 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 and, and maybe I have something for them. Mm. You mentioned your family. And I actually have all kinds of notes of the direction I want to take this show, but I would really like to go in that direction first is with your family if you're cool with it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So it's no secret that men deal with self-sabotage just yeah. horribly, right? And I'm not saying women don't, but men, fathers, you know, and we internalize so much of it. Yeah. <clears throat> After reading your book, Stop Doing That Shit, I really, I had so many aha moments. I felt like in a way I was like, man, I feel like I just opened up Pandora's box. And I, I, yeah. look, at, I look at things very, very differently. But here's, here's the snag I have now is, okay, now that I understand this, I'm implementing things in my own life, helping men in our community with it. But now 
when my kids come to me, my boys, you have three boys, I have four, and they come to me with these self-sabotaging statements and beliefs that they're, yeah. that they're feeling. Yeah. And my, my default is like, oh, you, know, you should just believe in yourself. You're, you're, you're good. Come yeah. on. And, but I, I know there's more to that, but I have yeah. no, no idea how to articulate that to them. Yeah. Well, part of that includes like the, the, only, the one thing that I drive home with my children is that it never means what you're making it mean. I, and I, that's like, I don't say it the same way all the time, but that's foundationally what I say to my children 40 times a day. It never means what you're making it mean. Why do you make it mean that? Could it mean something else? Is it, you know, because fundamentally we are in a constant state of interpretation. Mm -hmm. And we're always interpreting, interpreting life, interpreting. We're always interpreting life in the exact same fucking way. You're never in... You're never interpreting life in a new way. <laughs> you know, it's always through the same eyes and the same ears. It's always like the same filters are going off, you know, which is why I feel as if, uh, I, I, why I do my kind of personal growth work the way that I do it. I'm out to kind of intervene with some of that and kind of get into it and stir it up a little. But um, so that's probably the big thing for me. But the other thing I gave up a long time ago, long time ago is the illusion that ultimately I have the say in how this turns out for you. <laughs> right? Like I don't have the say in that. You do. <laughs> right? Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I like to ask them questions and, mm -hmm. but, but, and I don't like to see them suffering. And a lot of times with my kids, I feel as if more often than not, all they want to do is just be in communication. They don't even want your fucking shitty solutions. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. They're just like, just fucking listen. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you something. You know, like this kid at school, okay, how was that? Oh, and then he said, and I was like, okay, good. And what was that like for you? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to say about that? No. Okay. Rather than, well, here's a strategy, right? Or here's what we did in the fucking 80s, right? And your kids are like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, you old fart? I know. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, just think about yourself as a kid. The minute your dad tried to tell you some worldly wisdom, you were just like, okay, dad. Jeez. If only you knew, you know. Um, so I gave up the notion that I have this A and how this turns out. But I'm a resource. I'm here for you. I support you. I love you. Um, even when I'm pissed off at you, I love you. Take my jacket off. You don't mind, Larry. Um, no. Yeah. It's, it's, when, it's yeah. when other stuff comes off, we might we're have to worry, so. I, I know we're getting an intense subject right now. So the jackets are off in a very masculine and bullish way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I say that. But anyway, um, and, and I think as a dad, you've got to give yourself a freaking break, right? You've got to stop doing this like you're constantly fucking up. You know, there's a lot of good stuff you're doing, you know? And then there's just the things you fuck it up. And I said this to you a long time ago, and, but I've said this to a lot of parents. Be authentic with your kids. Stop living with this nonsense that you know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Tell them, you know, just fucking tell them. I don't know what I'm doing and we're doing this. And I don't know what I'm doing and we're doing this. Um, and then I think the final thing, boy, this is a longer answer than I want it to be. But the, the final thing that I do focus on with my kids is I show them how to do stuff. So if I have an argument with my wife, I show them how to clean it up. I'll do it in front of them. I'll show them how it's cleaned up. Let's say you clean up. So you go in and you say you're sorry, you accept responsibility, and you ask the other person, is there anything you want to say about it? And, and then you make a commitment. And that's it. And the more you do that, the better you get at that, and your kids see that. And then one of the things you'll notice, your kids will start doing it with you. So I'm sorry, you know. 
But you know, all the bad traits that you watch your kids doing and having, they fucking pick them up off of you. So holy shit, they think you're like, where did you pick that up? It's fucking you. That's what <laughs> they picked that up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have no doubt. <clears throat> Let me share this quick story with you and tell me how you would handle it. Cause I'm curious. Yep. My 13 year old the kid's got a heart of gold. Like yeah. very empathetic is always wanting to do the right thing. Almost, yeah. almost so much so that I, I feel as, as his parent, I have to remind him, I'm like, Hey, it's okay. If you disagree with me every now and it's okay. If you disagree with people, yeah, don't believe it. Yeah. It's, okay, it's okay to act out every now and again. Like he always wants to do the right thing. Yeah. And his 11 year old brother, <clears throat> very athletic kid has a wall full of wrestling medals and soccer and football. And yeah, my 13 year old has none. And we were all hanging out in my 11 year old's room last night. And he was just looking up at the wall and he was like, <clears throat> and this is what he said. I'm a failure. And I was like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, I'm a failure. I don't have one trophy and look at everything that Mason has on his wall. Yeah. And that one, that one perplexed me a little bit. And I just started asking him questions. I'm like, well, what, what value would a trophy bring to you? Like what joy would a trophy bring to you? And he was like, it would prove that I accomplished something great in sports and I never have. Okay. I gotta, I gotta be honest, man. Like I was just like, man, I, I need a minute to think about this one, but being able to in the moment, maybe having some questions to fall back on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes it's just a case of saying, well, you get the life that you put the effort into. You want to do sports? Let's do it. Right? Like, one of the things that I do with my son, I, I, and, I, and, and really, like, sometimes it sounds kind of harsh, because I know where you're coming from, your son, right? I get it. I get the whole world of where he found himself in that moment. But, but often – with my son, I get it right down to physics. You're currently getting the results that are consistent with whatever you've got your attention on. It's, I mean, for, if it was my son saying the same thing, I'd say, it's okay. You don't have any medals. Why? You've never given it your attention. <laughs> you've never had your attention on that. I get that you've got your attention on it. Uh, okay, what do you want to do about it? What do you want to do? Let's see. Let's get you into something. If you want, if you if you if you want to earn some medals, then let's go win some medals. Because I'm clear, given your talent, you're the kind of kid who, if that's what you want to do, you'll just turn around and do it. So you know, sometimes it's not it's not everything's about life lessons. I feel as if it's just. I mean, I know we're all waiting for that day when we say that thing. You know, it's like, and then I said it, and they were like, they'd seen the skies. <laughs> And it was a moment that I know was going to resonate with them for the rest of the fucking life. Right, <laughs> right. You can't remember half the shit your dad told you. Right. It's the kind of consistent messages. Right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm always bringing it to physics from older boys. My older boys, like, similarly smart, very empathetic, and very competitive in sports. Like, he's got this, you know, he's very competitive. Like I told you earlier, he just made – the varsity soccer team and he's a freshman and he's like a freaking midget and amongst them. And he's like a powerhouse, you know, I mean, he's just, he goes in, you know, and, um, but, but I'm always bringing it back to physics with him. I'm always bringing it back to, you know, you're currently getting the results of where your attention's at. Right. So if you come home with a B or a C, that's the result of wherever you put your attention, what was on your mind this week, what were you doing? What did you have your attention on? And then he can point to it. I have my attention. And da, 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 da. That's right. So I think, especially when they're young, I, I venture to take it out of the psychology. You can go a little too deep sometimes, you know. There's not really any, there's no great mystery of fucking life happening here, you know. You get soccer medals by playing soccer. It's not, <laughs> it's not like, you know, and you don't even have to be good. This is America for fuck's sake, you know. They just dish them out anyway, you know. It's like free cheeseburger, medals, <laughs> you're good, right? Which is fine. I don't even have a problem with that. Um, and, and, then, and then it's like, well, let's look at what you have had your attention on. What have you built? 
What are your skills? What have you produced? And you'll see it. It's right. It'll be right there. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Where were you last night? So I've, I should have just shot you a quick text. I probably should have done it. I'd have been right there too. I'd have been all <laughs> over it. But uh, what was I doing last night? I was actually uh, out to dinner with my children after a soccer game, which nice. is my wife. Yeah. And I've even come around to the notion of calling it soccer just to keep the Americans happy. Yeah. It's, it's not really in your wheelhouse. So I'm very yeah. generous. I call it soccer. I'm, I'm doing right. this for you guys. Yeah. You know, doing this for you just to kind of acquiesce to your uh, ignorance about the world's most beautiful game. <laughs> <laughs> My six-year-old calls it football. Good. See, and that's he, a, that's a deal right there. My he, sons all call it football, by the way. Do, do they? Yeah. Now, none of my sons call it soccer. They don't. They're just like, football. Did you see the football, Dad? Who do you think is going to win this game? I'm like, come on. Well, we were in the car the other night because I took the boys to go see uh, a movie the other night. And we, we drove past these soccer fields. And my, my five-year-old goes, he's like, look, they're playing football. And my 11-year-old goes, no, they're not. They're, they're playing soccer. He's like, no, nope, it's football because they hit it with their feet. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, football is the game I play because we go to his football games. He's like, well, that doesn't make any sense because you catch it with your hands. So like, <laughs> I love it. Fifth I grade love it. Or fifth that's, that's beautiful logic right there. Yeah. That's taking it right to the physics again. I love it. It's give, it give it to the five-year-old. He'll, yeah, he'll give it five to the five-year-old. They'll sort it out. They'll sort it out. <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk about your book. Uh, yeah. Do, do the work. Uh, yeah. This was This was sent to me, and thank you for this. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, you've got this divided up into a couple of different interesting, interesting questions, and uh, you get you get right to it with the question of self. Yeah. And um, how willing are you to consider that life is the way it is because of circumstances, but rather uh, what that? I'm sorry, I'm butchering that quote. The circumstances. Not because not because of circumstances, but rather yeah. because of. Yeah, because of, so, what, of the self-talk that pulls you down. Right. Yeah. Right. So talk to us about that quote. Well, that was a quote that I put in, unfuck yourself. Um, there was a need for do the work. There was a need for this. And, and for anybody that's got this, you'll notice there's like sections in it for you to fill in. Like it's a, it's a, it's a legitimate workbook. It's a resource. Okay? It's designed to be, read and written about right it's not designed to be read right it's designed to be read and written about and <clears throat> i felt as if um my, my style of writing is all about you right it's not about me why i'm fucking boring right i mean it's nothing i mean you heard me i talked about soccer that's what i would talk about so there's nothing remarkable happening here you know, because some people are like intimately fascinating, right? I'm not one of those, right? I mean, I'll I'll talk to you about Burger Fi, right? I mean, I'll do it while I'm reading Heidegger, but still, it's not particularly interesting. Um, and and you know, I've had like a lot of people have had challenges in my life, and some of them at the time were very very debilitating. But in the grand scheme of things, my relationship to them that was like. Pfft, right? Because I did the work, right? Um, so all my books are written about you. And the, the Unfuck Yourself was this kind of philosophical, like a way to look at certain areas of your life and change it, like flip the way you're looking at it and even the way you talk about it. Because the way you talk about life is what's giving you the emotional state you have. Right. You have no real sense of that when you're living your day-to-day -day life. You don't realize that the conversation you're in and the emotional state you're experiencing are dancing with each other. You don't get that that's happening. Right? Now, it's a little bit of a minefield, if you like, because some people have tried to oversimplify it. They say, well, I'm just talking about cool shit. Then I'm cool. Right, that's not how it works. It's that's kind of trying to fool yourself, and you know it. Right, it has to be it has to be like new talk, but authentic new talk. Like really, this is how it is for me. Right, 
And it's not about believing in yourself or any other, you know, hallmark fucking card. Um, <clears throat> it's none of that, right? Um, it's about authentic talk. How do I get to authentic talk? By being straight with myself about what I'm talking about. Right, just been starting to tell myself the fucking truth. Telling yourself the truth is an act of authenticity. Right, so that's even when you're talking about something, you're being inauthentic about it. the very act of doing that has you be authentic. You're not authentic like a fucking candle is a candle, right? Or a car is a car, like I'm authentic. You're either speaking and acting authentically or not. And you can't build it up like a bank account, like been a lot of authenticity this week, therefore I'm authentic, right? It's authentic, it's your authentic self moment to moment to moment to moment, and you can only be authentic in this moment. You can't be authentic in the last moment or in the moments to come. You can only be authentic in this moment. So do the work is a way for you to finally get authentic with yourself, to finally get straight with yourself. And I split the book into three areas. You, because that's the area where you're most inauthentic, by the way. You're most inauthentic with yourself. Your relationships, which is where your inauthenticity is just fucking run riot, right? In your relationships, they run riot, right? And then the final inauthenticity, the final bullshit is that you don't know what you're doing with your life. That's the final bullshit. That's the line you've sold yourself so that you keep doing what you're doing. Mm. And it's a bullshit line, right? And it stems from some other internal dialogue that you've got, like you can't have that life or you can't do it or it's not for people like you or you're not smart enough or you don't have the money or you don't have the time or... You know, it'll only happen once you move out of fucking Ohio or something. It's all just nonsense. It's yeah. all just bullshit. It's a complete unwillingness to take a stand for what matters to you as a human being and stand there in the face of life and take it on. And um, so do the work allows you to d dive deeply into you, right? And it allows you to dive deeply into how you do relationships. And it allows you to dive deeply into what you're currently using your life for. And people might say, well, shit, all of that and this fucking tiny little 140 pages. Yeah, because it's just jam-packed full of questions that you need to answer. And they're not easy to answer. They're challenging questions. It's stuff like, what's the five things you don't think you're enough of? That's a hard question yeah, to answer. Yeah. And on and on, but but I, but I really feel as if if people do the work and do the work, uh, it'll really open their eyes to uh, it'll really open their eyes to the pathway, like what they really want to make their life about and themselves about and who they are in relationships. I noticed that in this very first section that you get to I am two fill in the blank, and then that you're not enough. And stop doing that shit. <clears throat> you talk over and over again about the conclusions that we have about ourselves. Right. And, and, so, and then we act in certain ways, even though we don't want to, to prove those conclusions are true over and over and over again. So yeah. this very first section of the book, are we just, are you helping us getting real with the, with the conclusions that we have? It's, I want you to see like the tree. I want you to see, I want you to see the forest that you're in. Uh, uh, stop doing that shit was about finally just grabbing the fucking tree trunk, you know, like seeing like, what's the thickness? What's the, what's the thing that I've fundamentally concluded about myself? But in the day-to-day -day living in my life, how do I live? You know, how do I relate to what I'm not enough of? What do I think I'm a little too much of, right? Which isn't a conclusion, by the way. A conclusion is always some absence of something. So I was like, I'm not, right? It's, it's, real, it's not something like I'm too angry, 
It's more right? like it's more like I'm not good at communication, therefore right I'm not stuff good at like marriage. that, right? Yeah, right. But if you if you look in if you look in and and these and these the elements that I've put together here and do the work, you'll see this sort of shit. It'll all come together, and you'll see here's what I'm not enough of, and this is what I think I'm too much of. And you bring those two things together, you'll actually get your whole fucking persona. You'll get what the whole point of you being you is. You'll get the whole notion of what you what you get up to in your life. And one of the questions I ask you is, what's it like to live with this? Now, that's a really important question to ask somebody. And the reason why it's a really important question to ask somebody is, they've never thought about it like it's something they've chosen to live with. They think about it just like this is just how I am. Or, or this is, this is just life. Right. right. And so some, sometimes in a simple question, like what's it been like for you to live with this? And that question alone, you get to examine it. You're like, Oh, well, there it is. Now, before I ask that question, you were in it. But when I asked the question, was this separation? It's like that. Oh, I'm looking at myself. And the more you look at yourself like that, the more you can observe yourself like you're in a Petri dish or something, the more you'll see that there's a you observing it. Like it's you observing that you. Like, oh. And then there's times, by the way, in your life when you've actually done such a thing, you've had such a phenomenon happen when you've reminded yourself of something you did like what the fuck was i thinking why did i do that i was stupid i mean i should have handled that differently you're observing yourself doing life but almost simultaneously you'll you'll kind of merge it all into yourself again like there's no distinction between that and you i feel as if one of the powerful things in do the work is you get to distinguish that from you you get to see like how you've coexisted with this bullshit and that it's impacting you, right? It seems like there's, before you start looking at it like this way, that is you. And then I say, well, let's look at it and you're observing it. You're like, that's not fucking me, right? So sometimes people will say, well, yeah, I've become increasingly angry in my life, right? Now, think of the words, I've become angry, right? So that I, the very essence of you, is now intertwined with anger and language. I'm angry, right? Now, you might express anger from time to time, but would you say as a human being, if I sat you down in the cold light of day and said, define your would you define yourself as angry or would you say i'm this and i'm this and this and then there are times when i'm angry right but people would much rather fundamentally relate to themselves as something a little more empowering like i'm i'm loving or i'm tenacious or i'm compassionate or whatever adventurous or single mind whatever they might say about themselves these are the attributes of themselves that they most closely associate themselves with but even that, you could step back and observe and be like, oh, what's it like living like that? What's it like me living life as competitive? What kind of problems does that bring into my life? What kind of, what kind of arguments does that get me into? Right? How does that play out in my relationships, my being competitive? So there's been a few philosophers who have kind of dabbled in this, dabbled in it a lot better than I ever could. but. I'm always interested in you identifying some of your, what you think are your key components and then stepping back and observing them. And then, and then you get to see the problems. It's like, you're no longer the problem. You're kind of looking at it. And in the book, I, I, I get into how do I not live this way? How do I live in a new way? And, um, I get into you, I get into you about something about your, the honor of your word and your promises and your personal integrity, which is, it's never an easy conversation to have with people, but you know, we had it. 
is the reason we never perhaps get to that work is because I mean, this first step, it's like ripping a bandaid off and it's really looking at yourself in the mirror. Do you think people are just too nervous of what the answers might come up? The reason I, I, the reason I asked that though, too, is that that question that you asked, what would it be, what would it, what would life be like if this was different? And that the description of like, you kind of step outside yourself and you sort of look at things and you're like, well, wait a second, what would life be like that? Once you explained it that way, it was very calming. You know, it, it didn't seem like it was a, a judgment type zone. It just felt right. like, well, let's, let's just take a look at it and look at it for what it is and right. go from there. But it seems like yeah. getting, getting there might be the hardest. Sometimes, so there's two parts, I, I'll let a guess to that. <clears throat> and the, British, the British philosopher Alan Watts said, self-examination is like trying to bite your own teeth. I don't know a bunch of your listeners right now are trying to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to bite their own. It's like your teeth trying to bite themselves, <laughs> right? Which is an absurdity, of course. Right. You can bite your teeth, but your teeth can't bite themselves. Um, so I guess the way that I often say it is it's hard to look at something when the thing you're trying to look at is doing the looking. Right? So it's hard to look at your anger when anger's what's looking at it. Mm. Right? It's really challenging. You see your apathy when you're apathetic. Right? There's no distinction between you and that thing. It's you are it. So, so there's that. That's the first challenge. Sometimes when people read my work or they're, they're exposed to my work, they're dismissive of it. Or they think I'm judgmental. Oh, you're just judging people. Right? And whenever people do that, when they read my books, I know, I know they never read it with themselves in mind. When they read, if you read my book and you've got an opinion about a book, you missed the fucking point. The book's not about the book. The book's about you, right? And if you read it and find yourself in it, it'll make a massive difference. So, if, so that's the first aspect. The second aspect is, sure, there's this. And I've seen it. I've got this, uh, I've got this Facebook page. It's called the uh, Unfuck Yourself Book and Course Warriors, right? There's only like a 1,000 people in it, small. And they're, they're like the hardcore, you know, they're the hardcore, you know, they read the books, they, they've done the courses, they're into it, they talk about stuff. And when Do the Work came out, so many of them were like, uh, it's sitting on the table, I'm just staring at it, not doing it. No, I've read the first paragraph and I shut the book because I started to get scared. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fucking scared of what freedom? Like I'm scared of transformation. <laughs> You're scared of like fucking the life of your dreams. Like what's going on? And it is that it's like your darkness isn't as dark as you think it is. It's just dark for you. The world doesn't give a fuck, and it doesn't. Even your darkest, shittiest things. It's like meh. And I'm telling you, like even the even the dark, shitty things you've done that were even illegal. In terms of the universe, it's nothing. And it's a nothing burger. The whole thing's a fucking nothing burger. Um, and I got you might have significance to it. But anything that you're out to transform yourself, Larry, you got to go through it. There's no, stop kidding yourself. It's a, it's a walk through the mud. It's not like, well, let's build a bridge and go over it and pretend it doesn't exist. You know, no, you've got a memory, <laughs> you know, and in that memory exists your resentments and your regrets and your upsets and your shames and your guilt and your la 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 la. You, you got to get in there, dig that shit out. Where did that go? How did it take me there? How can I be responsible for that now moving forward, you know, and, and building a case for your freaking future. Do you think people, I know the, I don't want to jump ahead to the end, but the, the end is more about purpose. 
Right. And it just, if you look on social media and everything else, everyone's like, find your why, find your purpose. Do people mostly do this backwards? Are they out searching for a purpose before they actually oh do this internal? Lord. Oh, this, this whole purpose shit is driving me insane. <laughs> like, it's just driving me nuts. I just can't. You, you don't find your fucking purpose. That's like saying, okay, today I'm out to find my toenails. <laughs> They're fucking there. It's right in front of your face, you know. Um, but for one, it's like, I think a better analogy might be that you go into your wardrobe in the morning and expect it to dress you. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, just stand there fucking naked. Come on, do me. <laughs> <laughs> right get some clothes on this and then i'll go out in the world no you need to dress yourself and it's the same your purpose your purpose is waiting to be created it's a created phenomenon it's like a fucking painting or 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 some kind of really like some passionately created phenomenon that you live from but it's not given you don't find it under the fucking seat you don't find it, uh, you know, in the wheelbarrow tire section at fucking Walmart, right? It's not there. It's not like, and there I was. Uh, and amongst the wheelbarrows, I got my purpose. No. And, it's, and most people, you start to realize too, it's not something, most people think their purpose is found in some weird and mystical it's not. It's usually something simple and something that requires you to wake up from your self pity. And invariably, I find almost everybody's purpose is about somebody else. It's about, mm. it's about life. It's about being someone, right? And, and it's not to fix you. You know, it's not to, oh, I'm you know, I'm, I'm deflated, so I should get myself. I'm, I'm not inspired. What I need is a purpose. No, you don't have a fucking cup of coffee. That'll take care of the inspiration. No, your purpose is like literally like, this is why I get up in the morning. This is why I do what I do. I, and, and your purpose can fit in anything. Like, so my purpose is to empower uh it's, it's to empower people in their lives, okay? That's basically it. I mean, I've said it in different ways. I've said it's to make a difference for you, it's to empower people, it's to enable people, it's to inspire people. But that's what my life's about. And sometimes I get it right and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I'm really fucking good at it and sometimes I don't want to do it. But it's the alligator that I wrestle with every day. I'm here to fucking empower people, so I may as well do it, right? I'll do that anywhere. I mean, I'm standing in the in the line at Starbucks. I'll empower somebody. I'll say fucking something. I'll change somebody's day just by talking, just by being there, right? Or paying for the person in front's coffee or whatever. Simple thing, but it's it's about what my life's about, right? Like I'm enriching my experience of being alive. If you're not doing that, if you don't insert purpose into your life, what you'll have is a life of content, which is answering emails and ordering an Uber and paying your electric bill and going to the movies and buying shoes. That's content. Content with the absence, abs the absence of purpose is a shallow existence. You're a fucking robot. You're not up to anything. And to have purpose in your life, you don't have to change your life. You only have to change who you are in it. And when you change who you are in it, life comes to life. Like life starts to show up in new ways. Like you actually get inspired by shit that in the past you're like, wow, I never even noticed that before. Like, I'm so committed to making a difference for people. I, I genuinely get moved by people at times, by just little things they do when they don't even know they did it. 
but because I come at life from that perspective, I see it. I'm like, oh, wow. That's fucking awesome. That's just awesome. I'm so inspired by you right now. And it's to them, it's like nothing. But when you're given by a purpose that's greater than yourself, your concerns seem a little petty. Just a little. We had a comment in the comment section. Tommy said he was waiting for Black Friday to get a deal on purpose. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Ain't fucking coming, Tommy. It'll be a long line, and it's a line that never ends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, the, the middle section, now we jump from the beginning to the end. Uh, the middle, relationships. Uh, you look at some relationships in life where people scratch their head and they're like, why do I keep attracting the same type of people? And yeah. is that a reflection of who we are or does that have, or does that have anything to do with our conclusions we've made about ourselves or yeah. both? I don't, I don't subscribe to the notion that you attract anything. It's way too much voodoo. I do subscribe to the notion that you find what you're looking for. It's an activity. It's not passive. You're not like, where do I, where do, where do these people come from? Well, if you keep fucking looking for them, I, I used to have this little analogy that I used to say to people. If you go out in the daytime and you say to yourself, I'm just going to take a little mental note every time I see a yellow car. Right? I saw somebody online actually stole it from me, which was kind of annoying. But anyway, and they even fucking tagged me in it, but they were saying it like it was theirs. But anyway. Um, but if you go out and you observe traffic and you say, I'm just going to keep a mental note of every yellow car. And then first hour or so, you might see a couple. Like, oh, that's another one. That's another one. The more you play the game, what do you think you start to notice more and more? Probably everything yellow. Right. Well, you're seeing... And yellow car. Well, yeah, first of all, it's fucking yellow cars, right? Everywhere. Yeah. By the end of the week, it's all you see. Yeah, you totally don't. You don't see the red ones. Don't see the silver ones, the black ones, the blue ones. Maybe something unusual of it again. For the most part, you've, you'll become blind to it. Well, in your relationship, that's the same with your upsets. You keep noticing your upsets. You keep getting triggered by the same way. Oh, did you say? Oh, did you, what did you mean? Like, and you go, and it's the same one every time, by the way. That's the really interesting thing. Like, if you if you uh, pair somebody's upset down, you'll see there's a really simple statement at the bottom of it. And the statement is usually something like, you don't listen to me. Right? Now, it grows arms and legs, right? Because it's, you're kind of like, picking up evidence for it like a little yellow car or you don't respect me or you don't care about me or whatever it is if you were to pair your upsets back in your relationship you would see your upsets are based in a pretty fundamental incompletion from your own childhood aimed at one or both of your parents and you're still arguing about it with your husband or wife of 20 years and you don't know why and then but it's not even like, not everybody's arguing about it. You just do what you usually did when you were a kid. So if you went quiet and went in the way, you're doing that as an adult. If you lost your fucking shit, you're doing that as an adult. It's the same upset. And you can tell the upset because of the kind of, this kind of really simplistic nature of it. It's not sophisticated. It seems, our upsets seem like they're really sophisticated. And you've got people here, by the way, listening right now who their upsets aren't obvious upsets. They just don't look like it, but they are. They are suppressed. Or very often, like, diverted onto something else. Like, I'm pissed off at this, and then I'll get really fucking pissed off at that. Whereas that doesn't even merit me being pissed off at all. But in fact, if I look back, I'll see there was this other thing that was like, and then I went into it. Mm -hmm. So 
And that part of the workbook I want people to get the childlike nature of a lot of your upsets and how you do relationships and what it's going to take from you to start dealing with this shit to have these relationships turn around. Boy, that was a lot, but that's what you're getting. No, I liked it. So if you could, if we could summarize all three, so the first part is self, second part is relationships, third part is purpose. Right. Some, someone goes in, they buy the book and they, they do the work, if you could wrap it up and say, Hey, at the end of do the work, this is the template you've, you've built for yourself and you can All do right. this next. Right. What would that be? Right. Well, the one thing you're going to come out of with this book, like, like if you, some of your listeners right now, never do the work the way it's supposed to be done. Like they never, they'll do it. Like they'll go on a diet to lose 50 and lose 43. They never did the 50. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they'll save up money. I'm going to save up 10 grand and they saved up eight. Right. And so they're always the kind of almost, if you do do the work, the way it's designed, like don't have this be another fucking almost be this. Or Here's what you'll see. Your life is completely a function of what you declare. All the time, every time, it's you and your word. And as I say in the book, it's you and your promises and everything else is just fucking noise. But what do the work does is uncovers the noise. Like, here's the noise. This is what you've been engaging with that you just, you don't need to engage. Um, I, I, someone wants to ask me if you were to sum up who you are and, and I really wasn't trying to be a smart ass, but it sounded like a smart ass comment, but I said, I am who I say I am. Now, if you, if people could get the gravity of that statement, I am who I say I am. Well, what does that now exclude? Well, it excludes the past. I am not my past. Um, it excludes my feelings. Unless I include it when I share who I say I am. And so you start to see that and do the work, you're going to be left with this relationship to your promises that you've never had. And you'll see that what falls your, out of your mouth every moment of every day is in fact life or fucking death. I don't really mean it. You got to get the gravity of your words, like what you're saying, how you're saying it, who you're saying it to, how often you're saying it. All of that is shaping your life. And then do the work you're left with this. Like I'll actually show you the areas, not only the areas that suck, how to make a new promise in that area, how to go in there and change and transform that. And then what it's, and then have you confront what this is actually going to take from you. And then you'll see what doing the work really is. Changing a life isn't waking up and suddenly feeling confident or happy. It's you get to work on your life. You turn toward it and you face it down and you take it on and you be responsible and you get your ass kicked and you take it on and you be responsible and you get your ass kicked and you take it on. And then here's what you'll start to see over time and not a big giant amount of time, two months, three months, five months, a year, your life will start working and it'll work. Your life will work. Last question I have for you is how do we know when it starts to work? I mean, so like for instance, mm. if we want to pay off debt, like yeah, that's a very easy thing to do. Yeah. We, we want to lose weight, very easy thing to measure. But when, it, when we yeah. say to ourselves, you know what? I really want to want to take my marriage from good to great. Yeah. I think if you're, if you're engaging with that question, I want to take my marriage to good to great. And you're putting in a new action today that's consistent with that. That would be an indicator of that you're certainly on the right path. It's not about putting fires up. It's about planting more trees. You know, it's like more trees, more trees, more trees. What are we creating? What are we build? You're going to get fires from time to time. It's okay. What are you creating though? Um, but one of the things that I notice in my life, that when my life works, there's not a lot wrong. 
like I'm noticing, like I'm not, I've, there's no arguments, I'm not fighting anybody. Um, I'm noticing like I can't, even if I looked for something, it'd be wrong. I can't really find anything. Like everything works, like the bills are paid. I've been eating pretty well. I've been working on my, my dream project. Um, my wife's happy. My kids are happy. And by the way, one of the fundamental inauthenticities that we don't want to face as human beings is I'm okay. You're fucked, but I'm fine with that. Because if you tell yourself the truth, you realize you're not fine with it. You're not okay. You've become okay with it, but you're not. So, but when you get into your life and you dive into your life, you'll see <clears throat> like it, you would just look around and you can see like everything's working. And it's funny because when everything's working, it's not like the angels are singing or something. Right? Because they're not. It's not like it's just, you know, you're waking up and one's like, la. <laughs> it's not like that. But you wake up in the morning and there is a peace of mind about it. Like it's just ticking along. It's going, it's all going well. And and there's no pretense. It's not like it's it's if I asked the other people in my life about how it's going, they would say it's going well. I like that. Yeah. That's good, man. <clears throat> I want to personally thank you because I've known you now for about a year and a half, maybe a little bit longer. And you've definitely changed my life. The book, uh, Unfuck Yourself, definitely helped me a lot. Our very first podcast uh, definitely helped me <laughs> because we spent an hour on the phone after right. that podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then seeing you speak at our summit and then seeing you speak again when you came here to St. Louis. And that book, Stop Doing That Shit, there was something after reading that book, I, I bought the book and then I also bought the audio book and yeah. I constantly flip flop between the two and just listen to parts of it all the time. And that has been something that has changed the trajectory of my life. And this, this particular workbook has been, I love the simplicity of it. I mean, yeah. there, there's some hard questions. Yeah. But, this, but it's laid out in such a simple manner to where when you start to dive in and do the work, it's, it's been fantastic. So thanks yeah. for all the work you do, man. Yeah. And, and I, this is, I guess you, you're just like a walking, talking, you know, example of everything I'm talking about. Changing your life, tra changing the trajectory of your life doesn't require you to walk on fucking coals in the middle of the Arizona desert or something. Um, it requires some thinking. It requires some truth telling and, and it requires some courage to step into what's next and, and then have a little bit of trust in yourself, you know, like that you can work this out, like you can, this can turn in your direction. Um, but, but you don't get to, you don't get to kind of fudge it. You, there's, you can't con the game. You got to play it and you got to play it in a way that will have you have it all turn in your favor. Agreed. What's next for you, man? I mean, I saw you were with Tony Robbins uh, not too <clears throat> yeah. long ago. You, you just got this out. I mean. Yeah, I'm like, actually doing that workshop in Toronto in a couple of weeks. I'm taking do the work to a ton of people up there. And we're going to spend the whole day, like 10 hours, doing the work together doing the work and, um you're right and it's, and so i've i've initially planned i'm going to do uh, maybe a handful of these workshops but all being canada unfortunately in 2020 but it really is to kind of like strategize them and plot them out and get them right and you know i've got a bunch of people who are flying up for the one in toronto it's in uh the 19th the month but i just finished the manuscript for a new book um, which I'm working on. <laughs> I know you, you are a machine, man. <laughs> I know. Um, so I actually just submitted that to my publisher two weeks ago, and I'm fucking delighted with it. I am like so pumped for this book. I can't wait. And um, the book is all about how do I make myself wiser. So we all want to know more. But of what I know, how much of it has actually made me wiser? And how can I tell the difference when I, 
what's the difference between knowing something and then knowing something in such a way that it changes me right now we all know things but most of the shit we know it just falls out of our mouth like a fucking cookie recipe or something right like how much of it though like when you say it like you are it so not only am I to distinguish what that is and how, how you do that, how do I get wisdom out of my knowledge? But I focus on the subjects that I feel as if are hardest for us. So one is love. One is loss. Uh, one is success, which is success is such a big, I mean, it's such a fucked up thing for us at times, you know. Um, and then the other one is fear. How do I get wiser about my fear? So I share with you what I know about fear as a thing. And then I give you some pieces to dive into on your own that I extrapolate a little for you so that you can yourself can get fear the way that I got fear and in a way that I feel as if it made me a wiser man. Maybe I should ask you what you're not doing next. Cause there's always, there's <laughs> well, always another something. book. I'm actually starting another book at the tail end of February, which is, I really am. <laughs> so I start that at the end of February. That book will be completed by the first of September. That book is all about what is it to authentically be in a relationship. That would be my fifth book. The sixth book will be about, be, believe it or not, will be about being a parent. I can't what wait is for that. what is it to be a parent? Not how to parent. I've no fucking idea how to do that. But how does one be a parent? And what does one have to handle to be a parent? And how should I prepare myself? Or maybe I've got two kids or ten kids, and how do I transform being a parent for myself now? So that's what that'll be all about. That's probably going to be the easiest one for you to write because it'll be one page. You'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing and we're doing this. Like <laughs> the end. Right. I don't really be <laughs> just like a picture of me in the front going. <laughs> no idea. Uh, yeah. No fucking idea, but we're doing it. Instead of the fist, it's just going to be two hands. Right. I don't Didn't know. Work. Yeah. 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 Well, Gary, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I, this is going to be a regular thing, obviously, because love your, love your work. And I can't wait for the next book. And obviously the parenting book after that, so we'll have you on again, but, um, so yeah, I appreciate all you do, man. You're welcome. And thanks for having me, Larry. It's always good to contribute to your people there. Um, they're a committed bunch, you know, yeah. it's always good to talk to people that are committed. They bring something different to the table. They're not waiting to be convinced. They're, they're hungry for what you got to say, you know? Yeah. They, I mean, we, we definitely do have a large community of fathers who are hungry. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, if you guys want to pick up a copy of, of Gary's book, also connect with him. I'll have a link in the show notes. And by the way, this is the uh, last show we do before Christmas. So uh, head on over to gooddadproject.com forward slash two, four, six for this episode. We'll have all Gary's uh, Instagram. He, I know he's grown that quite a bit. All of his books and all of his resources. So guys, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we'll see you on Wednesday for the Q&A. Thanks. Dude.